JKB back with another episode and today on the show I'm going to be talking about a story I've never told you guys before and this has to do with a little game called F-Zero GX on the GameCube and Nintendo's website. So I used to work at EB Games around 2001, 2002 or 2003 when GX was actually coming out and I was a manager at EB Games and I was walking around the food court one day when I ran into the Nintendo rep. So when you worked in those stores, you would have a rep who would come in from all the different companies and talk to you about things coming out for that company or things they were doing or things you should talk about to the customers. And he stopped me and was like, dude, you wouldn't believe what we're doing next week in the food court. And I was like, what? What's the big deal? What's going on? Crazy, crazy. Because Nintendo used to spend a ton of money in that mall. It was one of the biggest malls in all of Ontario. So I thought to myself, like, what could this be? And he's like, dude, I'm not going to tell you. Let's just, 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 uh, you know, I'll come up and get you when we set up that day. So I'm thinking like, okay, this is like exciting because, you know, I'm a huge fan of Nintendo and I'm a manager at the store. So of course I want to know what it is. So time goes by thinking, what could it be? Maybe it's just like Mario shows up in a costume and hugs a bunch of kids and, and gives you a gold coin. I don't know what it is. Who knows? So the day finally arrives. It's about 9.30 in the morning and I see all of them, all these employees, all of them. Like, you know, there's a whole bunch of employees that work for Nintendo at the time and they are like sort of PR customer relation people who you know, are all over the place, well, before COVID, used to be all over the malls. You go to the mall and you talk to them in the food court or whatever, and they just set up and talk about Nintendo games. So I see all these people going to the food court. And I'm like, well, this is a big deal. And there's like seven of them, which at the time was, that was a lot of staff to bring to the food court. So I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, I can't wait. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm the manager at the store. I'm just gonna go down. So I go down to the food court, I turn the corner, I'm on the second floor, I look down, GameCube, oh my god, GameCube kiosks everywhere. I mean, like, like like 17 of them, I believe there was, and one of them was like hooked up to a TV where that was like the champion, they were calling it the champion kiosk. So I'm looking down like, oh my god, and it was for F-Zero GX, and it was a tournament across all of Canada to see who could get the best time on one of the levels. So there was rules, you had to sign up, it was an official thing, anybody could enter, of course, right? So I thought to myself, like, I'm coming back here, you know, when I close, because I was leaving at five o'clock. So I went downstairs at five, and he was like, hey man, you wanna try out? I'm like, sure. Wrote my name on a piece of paper, uh, you know, I, there was like your address and your phone number and everything in case you won. So, I can't believe this story, it's insane. So I've never played this game ever, ever. Never played it, because it's not out yet. It's like this sort of like, uh, you know, mini release they're doing. Like they're saying like, it's coming guys, come get in the tournament, you know? It's like this promotion they're doing in the mall. So, I start playing it. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, boom, I'm out. I, you know, I crash or whatever, and I'm like, oh, I, I don't understand the game that well because it was a huge jump over the last game. It was like nobody had played it yet. It reminded me of Wipeout for the PlayStation because it was in 3D, of course. But playing a game like this was so unique at the time because it was so fast and there was nothing like that for quite some time. So I start playing and playing and playing and and he's like, okay, like, do you want to do your official, your, your official tryout for it now? And I'm like, okay. So I go up to the television that's hooked up to everything, you know, and uh, the kiosk, as you're saying, is hooked up to all the televisions in the food court. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, here we go. So I had practice for like an hour. He let me practice on one of the machines, which anybody could have done. So I'm practicing and practicing and practicing and you can only play officially once. So he, he said that to me only once. So I go start going. And I realize as I'm playing for the first time on the screen, all these people are standing there watching and I'm like, what is going on? And I realized in that moment, it was because I was actually getting 
further than anybody on the track and nobody had completed an actual time at that point that was under a certain you know uh, 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 time so it was like I think my my time was like two minutes and something whatever on this course so as I'm playing I he taps me on the shoulder he's like dude we just found out they've changed the rules live they've changed the rules anybody in the top 10 can keep playing and try to beat their score and just sort of submit their best score or time I should say so now I'm like oh my god really I, I can do this yeah so now I've got the kiosk that's hooked up to the main televisions and there's like 40 50 people watching me cheering me on and I'm doing really good and he's like writing the scores down he's like just keep going man and every single time better score better score better score he's like so at one point I did this flawless run it was ridiculous right to the end of the track flawless and I was using the secret because the secret in GX is to actually drop down from top tracks down to tracks below or jump up to tracks above you to be able to hit the speed boosts on the track themselves that was the secret about that game that I don't think anybody realized and I realized it as I was practicing I thought like wait a minute I have to actually drop down to this point hit that booster hit the next one go back up and down and up and then around the corner and finish that track and I think I could beat this score so I did it I did it I I had a score that was so low he couldn't no one could believe it and there was like hundreds of people at that point cheering me on in this food court the biggest food court in all of Ontario it was ridiculous so he gets on his phone and he calls Montreal which is like four hours north in Canada here and he goes this is the score we have to beat and this lady goes holy crap that is insane he's like why there was a guy in that city who had beaten my time by two milliseconds so he got off the phone and he said to me you've got about one hour to beat this score no one's gonna beat the score and you know as exciting as you think this might go I played for another hour and I just couldn't beat this guy's score he beat me by two milliseconds and the crowd that was there knew all about it because the announcer was like you know this guy in Montreal beat this guy for two seconds and can Jason do it and it was an hour of agony just trying and trying crashing and long story short I came in second out of thousands of scores in Ontario here in Canada I should say across all of Canada and the first place winner was it was spectacular because he won it a flat screen television he was the first one in North America to have the silver GameCube given to him uh, and a copy of you know F zero obviously so in closing here that was the story but it actually guts a little bit crazier because the story didn't really end there because I didn't know that they were going to post my name on the official Nintendo website and I had this friend which you might have seen on the show long ago because you know I gave him a bit of a an homage not an homage just a tribute on the show because he passed away his name was Steve he was a huge Nintendo fan and I didn't even know my name at the time was on the website but he visited the website like it was a religion and one day he called me this is before he passed away and he was like he was shaking I could hear like that I, I felt it he's like dude dude it's like how why are you on the website I'm like what go to the internet boom 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 second place overall Canada I mean it was one of my most amazing moments in gaming of all time it was just this weird event because back in the day the internet was like getting big but it wasn't as big as it was now there's no YouTube or nothing like that so getting your name on Nintendo's website at the time it was posted on like message boards and people were talking about it like oh look at this they had this tournament and it was just this huge deal and then going back to the store and everybody's like congratulations man so I I, I didn't know what like what was going to show up in the mail for second place and they sent a signed copy of F-Zero over to my house with uh, you know a t-shirt a backpack and a couple of other things but 
what an amazing time I had playing this game in a mall food court and coming in second place by two milliseconds. So that's the story I wanted to share with you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any crazy stories like that, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode of JKB.